Hey, this is René and in this programming tutorial, I want to show you how to um, write a program that closes all the open positions at a specific point of time. And there will be an additional um, option in the settings where we can define a, um, a amount of uh, euros or dollars or whatever the uh, account currency is, um, where the expert advisor also closes all the open positions open positions if this profit is reached. So first of all, whenever we want to write a program, we have to open the um, uh, um, MetaQuotes language editor, which uh, what you can do by clicking on IDE. So this will open the MetaQuotes language editor. Then in the navigator, you can view the navigator. If you click on view navigator, you can click on experts and new. Expert advisors are the kind of programs that are allowed to open or close or modify positions. So we can say um, position closer, for example, as a name for this program. And the rest can be pretty much the same as it is in the standard settings. We click on next, next, next and finish. And then we can delete all these lines because we do not need them. We delete all these lines. The gray lines are basically comments which do not affect the program and they are just informations for the program. Then I always like to rearrange my brackets a little bit. So I am used to this style of writing brackets. So I rearrange them like this. So whenever we want to close positions at a specific point of time, we first of all have to have a um, option to define this point of time. So what we can do here is we can say, for example, we create some input variables for this. We can say, for example, close time hour, and we could say um, 17 o'clock, for example. And we can say we also want to have close time minute. So at 17 o'clock we want to close and we can of course also say close time seconds um, like this. So if we compile this, what we did here is <clears throat> um, the moment we click on compile, the computer or the MetaTrader takes this um, .mq5 file and creates a ex5 file from it. So ex5 files are the executable files that you will then find in the MetaTrader in the expert advisor's folder in the navigator. So we will find the position closer here now and we can see if we double click it and um, or if we just drag it uh, onto any chart we can see these three input variables here and the first one is named close time hour, the second one is close time minute and the third one is close time second and you can see the uh, standard values. The user would be able to modify these values if he wants to. So the program now has these three input variables um, or parameters um, because we defined them here. So first of all, we said input. This is important because otherwise, if I delete this and click on compile, the user is not allowed to modify it in the settings. So it is important to say input if you want um, the user to modify these variables. Then we have the variable type, which is in this case integer, and the integer data type just stands for any number pretty much. So these are all integer numbers. This is no integer number, this would be a double because there is a decimal point. But in this case, we only need um, like uh, integer numbers so we can use the int data type and then we choose a name for these variables and these are the names that are displayed in the settings of the expert advisor and we use a equal sign and any value as a standard value and we close the line or, um, with a semicolon so we now are able to say in the on tick function and the on tick function is the function that is called with every single tick so here we can call a function, which is the comment function. And in the, um, in the parentheses after the function name, we can say that we want to print something in the chart. So we can, for example, say server time, um, uh, colon, and then time current like this. What this does is it prints the current server, server time in the upper left corner of the chart. 
And this will be the time that we compare to the time that the user defined here to see if we are um, past this time and if we have to uh, close all the open positions. So first of all, we have to take these three numbers pretty much and convert them to a point of time. And we can, we can do this using the MQL daytime structure. And we can say the this structure, or we can create a variable pretty much um, of MQL daytime type. So just with any variable, you just write the type and then the variable name. And then you end the line with a semicolon. And what this structure here does is um, it holds all the relevant information about a specific point in time. So you can just click inside of this word and create data time and click F1 on your keyboard. And this will automatically open the reference. And there you can read everything about this structure. A structure can hold several variables and even functions. If you want to learn more about structures, you can check out the links below this video. You will find a complete course on MQL5 programming where I explain these kind of things in more detail. But for this short tutorial, it is just important that the structure has several variables which you can um, access using the point uh, operator. So I can say struct time point um, and then I can say I want to modify the hour um, variable of this structure pretty much. But before I do this, I want to pretty much initialize the variables of the structure using the time current function because this function and we used it before it normally just returns the current time but if we see here there's another definition of this function we can also provide a mql date time structure as a parameter here so if we provide our structure or struct time here which is of type mql date time it will automatically fill all the variables in the struct time um, um uh, yeah, structure variable pretty much and um it will use the the the, the current point of time and um, yeah, fill the variables here so it matches the current point of time. So I'm talking a little bit too much, but what I want to say here is if we just um, now print some of the um, some of the um, variables from this structure here, like this, maybe I can print the hour variable, the minute variable, and even the struct time, the yeah, maybe I can say the year and the day of year, something like this. This is just for uh, demonstration purposes here. So if I compile this, we can now see this print function will create a text output in the experts journal whenever there is a tick. And you can now see we now print 17, then 55, then 2022 and um, 37. And this is because we currently have 17 for the hour because the server time is 17.55. We have 55 for the minute. We have 2022 for the year, of course, and we have 37 for the day in the year because we have the 7th of February. So this should be the 37th um, day in the year. And watch closely. Just in five seconds, if, just, uh, if this changes, we will see 17 and then 56 following. And this is happening now. Yeah, you can see. So this automatically fills the current point in time into this structure. And this is a great starting point because now we can go ahead and say we want to modify just the important variables inside of the structure. The important variables are these three the hour, the minute, and the second. So we can say close time hour is um, shall be stored inside of this hour variable. And what this is for, um, I, will I will tell you in a second. And we can say close time minute, and we can say struct time uh, second like uh, equals close time second. And this will now override the 
these three variable bits inside of this structure. And the rest stays the same. So the year will stay the same, the day in the year will stay the same, and everything else will stay the same. And this um, will allow us to now use um, the uh, struct to time function, which is a function that again uh, requests a um, uh, mql date time structure as a parameter, which we can provide here, and we then return a date time value. And we can, for example, store it, uh, store the return value in a date time variable, which is named time close. And a date time variable is just a variable data type to store um, times pretty much in, inside of it. So we can say close time like this, and we can now say time close and add this um, point of time to our comment. And make sure that you do not forget these little um, commas between um, text outputs in a comment uh, function, um, in the comment function parameter. Parameters. So if we compile this, we will now see, we do not only see the server time, but we also see the close time that we want to use to close positions after this time. And we can now change this and you will see the close time will automatically update in the upper left corner. So now since we already have the close time, we just have to check if time close is uh, greater than uh, time current. And a if statement is just a control structure that takes a condition, which is this logical condition where we compare two points in time. And if the time close time is um, yeah, greater than the time current time, which means that this point in time is um, past this point in time, then we want to close positions. Close all positions. Positions. Like this. So we can now close all the open positions here. So what we want to do to close all the positions is, first of all, we have to include a file. So we include the trade.mqh file. And I, um, yeah, I said it again, I cannot explain everything in detail here, but check out the course um, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the description of this video if you want to learn everything about classes like the C trade class that we import here. And we can now use this C trade class to um, close the open positions. So we will have to create a object of type C trade, which we can do like this. This is just like defining um, or declaring a variable because in this case trade is a object variable of, of type C trade. And we can now use this trade object variable to close open positions. And what we can do here is we can first of all loop all the open positions. So we can say um, we want to use a for loop, which is a loop that um, yeah, has a, the following structure. So we can say for, then we open the parentheses here, for int i, uh, whoa, like this, int i is equal to zero, or no, we can say it, equal, it equals position total, which is, uh, is the total amount of open positions. So if we have one open position, that this would return one. If we have three open positions, it would return three. Then we subtract one from this value and we store the result in the i variable. Then we can check if i is greater or equal to zero. And after every loop run, we um, subtract one from the i value. So for example, if we have three open positions, um, three open positions, this um, precondition here would be called as soon as, as the program reaches line 32. And in this case, position totals would return three. And then we subtract one, so the result is two. And then we store two inside of the i variable. The following step is, the program checks if two is greater or equal zero. This would be true, of course. So we enter the body of the loop and we would execute everything inside of um, this body. So we will add our code to close positions in this body here. And after um, processing the body of a for loop, this i minus minus will be called and it will um, subtract one from three, so the next result would be two. 
So, oh no, I mean, first of all, <clears throat> two was stored inside of the i variable because we already subtract one from i. So the first value would be two, then we subtract one. So the next value is one, which is still greater or equal to zero. So we should enter the body again. Afterwards, we subtract one from one because we um, have to um, process the um, yeah this part of the for loop. And then um, zero is stored in the i variable, which is still greater or equal to zero. <clears throat> so we would enter the body again. So if we have three open positions, we would loop or we, we would enter the body of this for loop in total three times. And for every run, there is a different value stored in the i variable. First it is two, then it is one, and then it is zero. And we can now use this value to select a position. So we can say if position select and... Um, Oh no, we can use this to, first of all, receive a position ticket. So we can say position ticket is equal to position get ticket and then a position index is um, requested as a parameter. And this will be i. So for every loop run, i is, has a different value. First of all, it has two, which will um, then help us to find the ticket of the position that is currently at position two in the open positions um, tab here. So let me open some positions here to demonstrate this. Um, like this. Doesn't really matter what kind of positions I open. So we have three positions and for the first position loop run we would select this position because it is currently at index two of the open positions. That would be index one. This would be index zero. So we can now, um, yeah, we, we now get the um, <clears throat> the ticket of this uh, position at index 2, which would be this ticket number here. And we can now use another function to select this position. So we say if position select by ticket, and then we provide the position ticket here as a parameter, and we can check if we were able to select a position using this position ticket number. And the position <coughs> select by ticket function will return true if this worked. So if we were able to select a position, which means we found a open trade, then maybe we can print the position ticket. So you will see what this program now does. So first of all, we um, check if the close time is greater or equal the server time. And this is, um, or if the server time is greater or equal the close time. I think I messed up the um, the condition here. This is why we do not see any outputs in the experts tab here. But if I rearrange this condition and check if the current time is greater than the time close, then we should enter the body of this if statement and we should loop um, through the open trades. And you can see this will now um, produce a lot of um, uh, statements or um, information here in the experts tab because we now print the ticket numbers of the open positions. This means we were able to select these positions. And now we can say we do not only want to print the position ticket, but we want to use the trade object here to use the position close function, which is part of the C trade class. And we can access this function using the trade object. Again, check out the complete course if you want to learn about this. And now we can provide a position ticket, which we already have in the position ticket variable here to close this position. And we check if this was successful. And in this case, we want to see a print statement and we can say, for example, position number, position number, and then we can say position ticket was closed like this. And maybe we can even say why it was closed because of closed time. So if we say compile, we should now see that all the positions are closed because we are currently, we currently reached the closed time. And whenever I open a position, this will be automatically, um, the position will automatically be closed because the current closed time is, uh, or the server time is past the closed time. If I change this to, let's say we want to close at 20 o'clock, then we can open positions and they will not be closed. But as soon as we reach this close time, the positions, positions will be closed. Maybe I can demonstrate this in a, in a um, 
<clears throat> example here. So we can say, um, yeah, wait, let me modify this. At 18, 7, and 10 seconds, we want to close all the open positions. Then we, will, we just have to wait, <clears throat> and let me clear this, until we reach this um, point of time. <clears throat> and then we will see that the positions will be closed. Yeah, here you can see it. And there is the information about this process in the experts tab here. So this is working just fine. And we already learned how we are able to close positions at a specific point of time. And this is great. So I promise you, I do not only want to teach you how to close positions at a specific point of time, but only if, uh, but also if the positions reach a specific amount of profit. So we can say, we for example have a target profit uh, input here, and if the profit reaches 10 euro or dollar or whatever your account currency is, then we want to close all the open positions. So. Um, the easiest way to check if we um, or to check the current profit is um, using to, uh, a function which is called account info double because you can use this function to receive information and you can look it up in the documentation of course about all the um, parameters of your account, which are double values. So if you click on this enum account info double, you will see all the identifiers you can provide as a parameter for this account info double function. And if we, for example, add account equity, like this account equity, this will return the account equity. And we can say we want to subtract the account info double account balance from this value because this will um, tell us how much profit we currently have. So for example, we can say um, profit and then we can print the profit using the double to string function because then we can cut the um, amount of digits to two. And we can even say we want to say profit is... Um, we can say the target profit is um, double to string, target profit like this. And if we prepare our comment like this, this will now print the, the, the profit of all the open trades. So let me first of all um, rearrange the inputs here so we do not uh, close the positions with every tick. And now I can open some positions and you will see, now uh, we see the profit in the upper left corner here. Because this will show us the difference between the equity and the current, um, yeah, the current balance. And this is the profit pretty much of the open positions, right? So we can go back to our program and we can now check, and this is super easy, we can now check if um, the time current is greater than the time close or if the profit is above or greater than the target profit. And you can use these two um, uh, vertical lines here to say that you want the if statement to check if either the first condition or the second condition is true. And it is enough if one of these conditions are true. And then, um, yeah, you you um, you will enter the body of this if statement and you will um, close all the open positions. But um, first of all, we of course have to modify this print statement because this is not completely true anymore because we do not close the positions um, because of the close time every time because we also have to check if it was because of the profit. So we can do this and this is really simple. We can just, um, for example, create two Boolean variables is close time yeah, like this, and we can say time current is greater than time close, and a Boolean variable is just pretty much a variable or a data type that can just hold two states, true or false. So this is perfect for conditions. And we can check if a profit reached like this, or just a, is profit, doesn't really matter how we call the variable, and we can check if profit is greater or equal target profit. And now we can use these variables here to check if one of these is true. So we can check if clo is close time or is profit. And we can now use the same variables here for the print statement. So we can say if 
um, if is close time, then we want to print this print statement here. And else if is profit, then we want to print a different message. So we just copy this line here. And we can say the position was closed because of profit. Um, yeah. And if we compile this, we should see if the profit now reaches the target, which is currently 10. Or let me, let me modify this so it will be reached faster. We can say, yeah, for example, f uh, 5 euros. So if we reach 5 euros, then um, the positions should be closed. And I, I can clear this again. And yeah, you can see right now nothing happens because we did not reach the close time. Um, and we did also didn't reach the profit, the target profit here. And yeah, maybe I can modify this again to four uh, euro profit or maybe even three because right now we lose some profit. So if we reach this profit, yeah, now we reach the profit and we close all the open positions. And this is it. This is how you write a simple program that can close all the open positions using a uh, uh, target profit in um, account currency or a, a specific point in time. And you can of course um, always remove one of, the, one of these conditions to just check for the other condition if you do not want to use, use both but only one condition. And you can do with this program whatever you want. You can modify it. You can check for uh, not only a target profit but also for a maximum loss of course and the process is always the same. And yeah, make sure that um, you understand that this program closes all the open positions in your account. So it doesn't really check if this um, position was uh, opened by a specific program or something like this. If you want to do this check, then you would have to provide, um, then you would have to search for a magic number or something like this. But this is um, stuff that I do not want to cover in this video. But if you want to learn more about automated trading in MetaTrader 5, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. And if you want to make me happy, give this video a thumbs up and recommend it to your friends and fellow traders. So I think, uh, or I hope that you learned something in this video. Make sure to cover um, the code and do not forget any brackets or semicolons and it will work on your um, PC. And yeah, play around with it, modify it, have fun, and we will see each other in the next video. Until then, have a great time, have good trades. Bye-bye.